Why is it that simply changing the nutrition isn't enough to fix a lot of people's metabolic health? Stay tuned to this episode to find out more. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I have an interview with Dr. Francisco Gutierrez, who is a classically trained or allopathically trained doctor who had his own health crisis back in around 2012 and began studying the work of Dr. Jack Cruz. But while he was transforming his health, it took him a little bit longer to get out of the standard medical practice due to insurance and money. So we're gonna talk about that journey. But since 2020, he has been seeing patients through the quantum lens. Now, Dr. Gutierrez and I actually went through the quantum biology collective training together. I'll link that below in case you're a doctor or a health practitioner who's interested in learning some of the things that Dr. Gutierrez and I talk about today. But he sees his patients through the eyes of that quantum lens. And what he's able to do, and what he's been doing with his patients is nothing short of remarkable, as you're gonna hear from this interview. People are losing weight when they could not lose weight before. People are getting off antidepressants. People are having these amazing health transformations because he's looking at things a little bit differently than the standard medical model. Now I'm gonna link Dr. Gutierrez's clinic, all of his information in the show notes for you guys because he does see people all over the country. And so if you're interested in working with him, that's a possibility for you. There are also several, several timestamps down in that information section. If you want to kind of guide around through the show and just see different things that we talk about, so many amazing different topics that I think are going to be very helpful for you. Now, two sponsors of today's episode that makes those timestamps possible. The first one is going to be Optimal Carnivore. This is my go-to for filling in nutritional gaps. This is the organ complex. We also use the beef liver as well as the brain nourish supplement here. You can use my code carnivore uppercase Y to save 10% on those. Second sponsor of today's show is going to be Upgraded Formulas. Now this is their magnesium, which I do love, but they have an amazing hair tissue mineral analysis, which is a way you can tell what's been going on in your body for the last 60 to 90 days versus a blood test, which is really only going to show you about a week or a day or so. It's a lot more accurate to do a hair tissue mineral analysis if you're trying to solve mineral issues. So use my code YOGI or YOGI12 to save at Upgraded Formulas. And let's go ahead and jump right on into this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am really excited to have Dr. G with me here today, who is an allopathically trained primary physician but he has made quite a few changes. He's had quite the journey and I'm just excited to talk with you today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm a big fan of you, your podcast and of yourself and I love your story. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, and we went through the quantum biology collective together back in uh, October, November, December of last mm -hmm. year and learned some from amazing people about the quantum lifestyle. And the really amazing thing, why I wanted to bring you on today is that you are implementing this with your patients now and really seeing some cool results. But I wanna back up a little bit before we jump into all that and just give a little backstory about you as a physician and you know how this has evolved to the point where it is today. So yeah, let, let tell us how you got interested in this stuff in the beginning, in the first place. Sure. So, um, so yeah, so I'm a allopathic trained medical, medical doctor. My specialty is in internal medicine. I'm board certified in internal medicine. So uh, I'm trained like any other doctor that you'll, that you'll see out there in the, uh, in, in the hospital system or health centers. Um, but um, uh, a few years after I started my private practice, I had a health challenge and I, I had a stroke, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a very scary thing. And I could yeah. have really died. So, um, and at the time I was uh, a, a sports champion. I was a squash champion of the state and I was training for bicycle rides, 50 miles plus. And then I started thinking, well, how come 
if I'm doing this, how come I get a stroke? And then, uh, um, so then I started thinking, well, maybe I didn't pay attention in class or maybe there's something a little bit more to the story. And then that actually um, drove me to go into different uh, avenues to try to research how this works and how health really works. And at the same time, you know, um, I, was, I was getting people, patients uh, asking me for my help in different situations. And I learned that I wasn't able to help a lot of them with the tools that I was given in, in medical school. So that was a driver for me to find more information. So I first learned about nutrition. I thought I had a pretty good diet, which I learned I didn't after I learned about nutrition, which you know, underlies the, the, the fact that most doctors uh, don't have any education in nutrition. Right. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, uh, uh, that's a travesty, uh, but anyway, so that was that. And then I also, but then at the same time, once I, I learned that, I, I, I knew that there had to be something more. Um, just because uh, that that didn't seem to be the whole answer for a lot of people, um, so then I started uh, go, doing more, going more into rabbit hole, rabbit holes, and then around 2012, 12, I learned about Dr. Cruz, who I'm sure your audience knows who he is. Yes. Uh, so uh, I hope I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So so then at the beginning, you know, I, I thought he was a lunatic. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, then, but I think that's the first reaction that all of us have um, mm -hmm. when we were exposed to these kinds of uh, concepts. Um, but then, you know, I kept doing more and more uh, research on, on my own based on the things that he was saying and then based on the things that I was learning. Um, and then the big aha moment was when I realized um, that the key to health is the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm sure your audience knows about the mitochondria. I'm sure you've, because I've listened to you, uh, to your podcast. So the mitochondria is this little organelle that is in charge of translating the physical energy from outside into the biochemical energy and water. Nobody talks about the water, but that's yes. one of the major, major, so things that, major things that mitochondria does. Mm -hmm. It translates all that and creates life and therefore health. But the mitochondria does it by... Uh, doing, implementing a system called the, the electron transport chain, mm -hmm. which is not called the calorie transport chain, and it's not called the protein transport chain or macronutrient mm -hmm. transport chain, it's called the mm -hmm. electron transport chain. So once I learned, I mean, I knew that, but once I really knew what that really meant, that means that I had to learn, that meant that I had to learn about quantum physics, protons, electrons, and photons. And that's a, that's how I, understood finally, and that's why I joined the Quantum Biology Collective and I took the course as you did, because that's really the fundamental piece that I was missing in my, in my knowledge of trying to uh, get people back to health or helping them with, with their health. Now, I still had to, re I, st I was still working in the, within the medical system and me as well as other, as all the doctors, are tied to a paycheck. So that paycheck is kind of hard to leave, but um, COVID came and actually COVID made things a lot easier for me to leave because it, it was a kind of like a stop uh, in, in, in my life and my career and say, okay, let's reassess where you are, reassess what you know. And then at that point I decided, you know, it's time for me to, to do a different thing. It's time for me to really put in practice all these things that I've learned um, so I can really help people. And that's how my new company was born. And it's called Solimar Direct Health. It's a direct primary care practice. Me, all that means is I'm still a primary care doctor. I'm still licensed um, by the medical boards in Massachusetts and in, in Rhode Island where I am now. Um, but my perspective is different than you'll, that you'll find in the mainstream medicine. Um, and the only way I could do that is by eliminating all the middle people in between you, the patient, yeah. and, and that's and and we called it Solimar Direct Health because of the sunlight, water, and magnetism. It's a tripod for tripod for life and health. I love that. I love that. And you know, so as a allopathic physician, I you're the first one that I've ever spoken with, and I've had a lot of people on my show. A lot of them want to talk about nutrition 
you, you mentioned nutrition, you're like, okay, yes, I had to learn about that, which I think is very important when we look at our mitochondrial health. But, but a lot of the doctors that I speak with never mention the electron transport chain, never mention any of that stuff. So how do you kind of communicate this stuff with your patients now? And how does that change the way that you treat someone when they have a chronic health condition? Yeah. So that's, that's, um, a very good question. And, <laughs> and I, I will make it as simple as possible. So let, so the mitochondria, which we have already established is the modulator for, for health and disease if, if we ruin it. And it is looking for electrons, photons, and protons. So there is a, a very famous um, physicist, his name is Albert Einstein, who won uh, his only Nobel Prize that he won was when he discovered the photoelectric effect. And basically, without getting into the weeds, all it says is that in, on this dimension, the only thing that programs electrons is light, it's sunlight. So basically, the mitochondria then, what they're doing is they're looking for sunlight. Okay, that, so that's what they're looking for. So when I talk to patients, I ask them, have you ever seen a plant that is fat? Hmm. No. Right? Why not? Because they don't have to be fat because they're tethered under the power of the sun to the plug, which is the earth, 24 mm-hmm. 7. Uh, so, um, the only reason why we have to eat is because we, we're not tethered 24 7 under the power of the sun. We have to develop another way of getting the sunlight back, and that's called food. Food is nothing but a supplement of sunlight. Mm-hmm. When, when you get it programmed by sun and the earth, or you ate the animal that ate the food programmed by sun, by the sun and the earth. When, pe- when, when people eat processed food, that has no sun. So then what, ha- what happens is the mitochondria now, now you're sending a signal to the mitochondria. Wow, the environment here has no energy. And what does the mitochondria do? The mitochondria starts to turn on programs that actually make you retain fat because fat is nothing but a, defense mechanism to protect us against starvation. That's, that's how this works. So when you think in terms of nutrition, in terms of what you really need to do is get the sunlight back, things are easy because then you mm-hmm. can pick things that are actually programmed by the sun and you're going to avoid things that are not programmed by the sun. Like a bag of potato chip may have the same calories like a bag of, of, of carrots, but one has sun and the other one doesn't. So one is going to ruin you and the other one isn't, even though they have the same calories. And the calories to me, we can get into that too if you want to, but calories has made much harm. It's one of the things that has, has made the most harm, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. To me, absolutely. And that's a conversation I have constantly over on my Instagram, you know, I've had, <laughs> I put up a post the other day about how obesity is a sign that your body is losing energy to the environment. That's right. That's exactly That's your, you know, when a, and Dr. Cruz talks about it, when a star dies, it explodes. If we sprain our ankle, it gets bigger. When sure. the heart is failing, it enlarges, you know, and, but the people that are in the, you know, modern world are selling calorie counters and 1200 calorie meal plans. And, you know, people always are like, where's your meal plans? I'm like, I don't sell meal plans. I'm not ever going to sell meal plans. I don't want to sell meal plans because <laughs> I don't want you focused on the meal plan. I want you to focus on, like you were talking about, where did your food come from? Was it programmed by the light? right? You know, that, and again, are you losing energy to your environment? Because obesity is just a sign that your mitochondria is, is not well. And so understanding that and then shifting so that we're understanding how we change that energy system of the body. I think that that is a paradigm. I'm still trying to get across to my audience. I feel like you as a medical doctor have credentials and, and, and work with patients. And so how do you explain that to a patient? Like, Hey, you're losing energy to your environment. We need to repair your mitochondria, AKA 
improve the energy management system of your body? Do they, are they skeptical about that? Or how, how do you kind of help them understand that? Yeah, so, so just to hone in a little bit more on what you said, which is correct. Uh, the, um, let's start to try to understand what a calorie is, okay? Yes. So a, a calorie is nothing but a description of energy. And actually in the, in the uh, case of the calorie is a description of heat. And it was invented as a, to be able to um, manufacture steam engines in the 1800s for a machine, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, how did it get involved in biology? I still don't understand. I don't, I really don't understand because it has absolutely nothing to do with biology. And, I, and, I, and I'll explain to you why. So let's take gasoline. A gallon of gasoline is, has the same energy as 10 pounds of coal in kilojoules, same amount of energy. But you wouldn't put 10 pounds of coal into a Ferrari engine or into any engine, right? Why would you, why would you not? It's cheaper, has the same energy. You wouldn't because you would ruin it. Right. So when you think in terms of calories, you're thinking in terms of, you, you, you may make the mistake of putting coal into your Ferrari engine. So you have to get back to what exactly is that we're looking for. And I just said, we're looking for sunlight. We're looking for electrons programmed by sunlight. That is how this fundamentally works. That's, that is one point. The other point that you make is by, li which I explained to people, by living a, a modern, in a modern environment, based in non-native non electromagnetic waves, such as blue light or Wi-Fi, et cetera, that does, many things. One is putting you away from your native electromagnetic waves that actually nourish you right outside in nature, plugged into the earth under the sun. But now you're, look, you're living in this cocoon that is basically a spaceship mm -hmm. that is completely, it's foreign to your environment and not only ruins your timing, which is a circadian rhythm, which we can talk about, which is, which is how this whole thing works, but it also steals, it dehydrates you. So it, yes. it, it's a microwave. So it steals electrons from you. So then what happens? I just told you that we get, we gain fat and we, we get obese as a defense mechanism. If you have enough electrons, the mitochondria is gonna say, good, let, mm -hmm. we don't have to make fat. But if we don't have enough electrons, that is a signal to the, or, or if the mitochondria is going to expect that there won't be enough electrons, such as who, such as a bear that's gonna go hibernate. What, what does a bear do before it goes to hibernate? It eats a lot, eats a lot of sugar. Why? Mm -hmm. It's gonna get a fat diabetic with a metabolic syndrome and hypertension, but it's gonna go sleep six months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so basically what this modern lifestyle has done steals electrons. It gives the wrong cues to the mitochondria to modulate health. It turns on defense mechanisms for a rainy day that never comes. And there comes a point where that, those programs that get turned on actually turn against us and starts to they start to cause inflammation and start to, to break down the system. And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a snowball effect and it, it results in disease. And the consequences are the diseases that we in allopathic medicine want to give you pills for, pills and, uh, and procedures. Exactly, which, never really get down to the root cause, which is healing the mitochondria and the body's energy management system. If you just take a pill or have a procedure, you're going to end up either with more pills or more procedures six months, a year down the road, because you never fixed the dysfunctional energy management system. Would you say? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example, a very, a very glaring example, like bariatric surgery. Mm. Oh gosh, so, yeah. Right. So people want to have their the stomachs cut, cut off mm -hmm. or, or banded or, or, you know, put a rubber band around mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then what happens is once you, once you have a surgery, then you can't go back, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so that, that's the problem. So now all of a sudden the stomach is our, <laughs> you know, our stomachs are our enemies. Yep. I mean, what, I mean, even the whole premise is absurd. I mean, what, what, you know, what, why, why can't people think this way maybe the paradigm that we're living is the wrong paradigm and we have it we have to look at it from a different perspective and in, you know in essence you you i answered your question the previous question 
um, the, what, what I do with my patients here, um, you know, first I, I explain to them that even though they feel well, they're because of the blood tests that I do, they're not necessarily well, you know, they have some sort of um, uh, metabolite already. Like, like I always say, just for insulin levels, fasting insulin, which, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, is very important because even though, if, even though if everything is all normal, quote unquote, um, if you have a fasting insulin level, that means that you're already started on the way. So then what I do is um, after that, I pair it with the body composition analysis, which helps me do two things. At the beginning, it really, it helps me reinforce the point that they're not necessarily well because it's a 3D body composition. So they're seeing their own body there. Um, and it, it gives us information about body fat, where the body fat is stored. But the second thing that it does, it actually, um, I can track the progress by, you know, I, we build a, a personalized wellness plan for everyone. Everybody's different, but the concepts are the same. You know, what we, mm -hmm. what we teach is what you teach. Um, and, uh, and, and what we, what, and then we track the progress and people can't believe it. You know, I, I have a kid, just to give you an, an example, I have, a, I have a kid that came here, uh, he's 21. Um, he was taking three different uh, depression medications oh. and uh, he's 21. Wow. And he was overweight. And, and so he engaged with us and, and uh, you know, four months out, uh, he is on not, not taking any depression medications. He feels wow. great. He's lost 15 pounds of body weight and he's lost 25 wow. pounds of body fat. And he's reduced his abdominal growth by like four inches without counting one single calorie and without putting one single toe into the gym. Wow. So that's, that's it. It, the reason why I, 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 I like the body composition in, in this, this particular technology, I came to, to this, I, I came to the mitochondria first from the exercise standpoint, mm. because I'm a big exerciser and you know, I'm a road cyclist and I do a, a lot of events. So I was, and then I was listening to a podcast of some very famous people that train elite athletes and they were talking about my, the mitochondria health, how they have a very robust and abundant mitochondria from the exercise. Of course, they don't acknowledge the fact that they're outside, <laughs> which right. oh, is doing a lot of a lot of good too. Yes. And then, and then, uh, um, and then I said, okay, so I can't make every, every of my patients an elite uh, cyclist, but I can fix their mitochondria by applying these concepts that we're talking about here. And how about if I can prove it using the same technology that people in gyms use? So the, the, the machine that I have, I mean, everybody that, come here, that comes here say, well, no, no doctor has ever put you in this machine, right? Because no doctor, <laughs> no doctor is gonna do the things that, that I'm doing here, which they should, I mean, you know, but they don't. So, um, so that's how I came and that's how I, kind of show them and and by doing that it actually reinforces their accountability and there comes a point where the new habits become ingrained and then you know the, and then you know we can just layer on top if they want to do other things or with more exercise or whatever but the the fundamental and and the and the interesting thing too about this approach is even though i un i understand and i acknowledge the fact that exercise is important it is the least um, uh, item that we pay attention to here. We, we, yep. The fundament, the foundation is is light. That's the foundation, and then nutrition. But understanding that nutrition is a supplement for light. Yes, exactly. I, and I think the light thing is just so tough for people. Like you said in the very beginning, which I was the same way when I first started listening to Dr. Cruz and you know some of his the, the people in his arena. I just thought that was silly, and I was thinking about it last night. You know, people used to ask me because I've been kind of a quote unquote health influencer. I don't even like to say that, but I've had this, you know, social media following and podcast and YouTube for a few years now. And people would ask me, what do you think about light exposure? What do you think about non-native EMF? And I, I would play and I'll tell them, well, I think people are worried about the wrong things you know, and, and you should focus on your nutrition until I had the experience of 
focusing on my nutrition and having a little health crisis. And so I think that can be a tough sell for people. And when it sounds like when you're working with patients, like you said, light is number one, and then food is a supplement for light. So how do you help them understand that so that they're compliant with that? I mean, it sounds like that young man was very compliant if he had those sorts of changes. How do you, uh, how do you kind of get the message across to them in that regards? I show them results. You know, yeah. so, so like, like this, this young man, uh, he, um, he wasn't eating that poorly. I mean, uh, but he was indoors a lot. So the, mm. the only, the, the, well, not the only one, but the major change he made is he wakes up at sunrise and, uh, and uh, sleeps in, dark, in darkness. Mm. Wow. And, and, and he's out in, in the sun and that's what happened. I have, I, I have other patients. I have, I have also patients. So I have this, this, this patient that came here for a physical at the very beginning. And I discovered he was diabetic and, and he didn't know. And he was, she sugar was like 400 and his oh. A1C was like 14. And if you, the A1C wow. is the average blood sugar yeah. over the previous three months, normal is 5.5 or below. Right. So, um, so he was completely out, out of whack. And then um, I said, look, you know, um, I, we can do one or two things. I could put you on insulin, which is the wrong way to go. Um, and I can lower your blood sugar. Or I can put you on metformin for a little while, um, and then but you engage with us in our program and see where that takes you. So to make a long story short, we chose the second route. Insulin is the wrong thing to do. In oh yeah. Um, and then uh, and then in two months they went to was eight point two, and in six months he's off metformin. He's hovering around you know five five point five. So wow. I re we reverse the diabetes just by applying these these concepts so and so when i show them results yeah i mean i'm gonna get this we're gonna get the skeptics we're not you know i didn't invent this i mean it's not like, like right <laughs> like, like uh, you know i don't know some some somebody took me to a retreat and all of a sudden no this is a a process that i've and you have as well uh mm -hmm. you know encountered by trying to learn how health fundamentally works you know in, in your case health influencer with big following in my case as a medical doctor how, how can i with a straight face have somebody come to me who's diabetes hypertension you know gout and i'm just going to give them pills and send them and see them in six months when i know yeah. when i know there is when i know fundamentally there is something more fundamental and i know an approach that can help them. yeah agree i mean i almost feel like kind of bad all the years that I just talked about nutrition. I didn't talk about these other things because I feel fundamentally for me to have my health turn around. That was the simplest, the changes that I made were so simple, you know, That's getting it. out at sunrise and then just simply trying to spend more time outdoors. And it kind of becomes like a game, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do my podcast. Can I do it outside? You know, I have to do this activity, can I take it outdoors? Or, you know, you, you, you try to, you kind of gamify it a little bit and then you watch your health transform. And it's almost like, wow, you know, and, and, and the whole diabetes and artificial light concept, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you and I both know there's a ridiculous amount of literature to support mm -hmm. artificial light and obesity, huge, huge, huge tie. But I think the average person still is convinced that it has nothing to do with each other. So do you show some of these studies to your patients or? Oh, yeah, I, I have some, 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 uh, some, gra some uh, uh, like uh, drawings that, that I, I got from, from, uh, from actually some, some reviews and, and research of, on how the light alone um, can actually cause um, fat in the liver, diabetes, cancer, you know, um, the, the, the interesting thing, you know, so that there are a lot of um, PhDs and sometimes MDs that now have books out. Uh, one of them is Dr. Bigman. Uh, he wrote a book. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Why We Get Why Sick. Why We Get Sick. Yep. Um, so, and I, li I like him a lot, actually. You know, I, I like him a lot, but he, he, he mentions, he, he's about insulin and he's right. He's mm -hmm. about insulin and what insulin does and why we become insulin resistance and it mentions three things one is um, stress inflammation and high insulin to begin with and then right. i showed well that's true that's you know he's a scientist he's not an md but he's that's his research 
and he's published all this research. But guess what? And, I, and then I show him, I show him that graph. Blue light alone can do inflammation, cause stress, and cortisol, and cause insulin, a high insulin. I show yeah. him right. So that's another way that you can get insulin resistant. And yeah. then, and then the the big thing also is um, the the whole thing about the circadian mechanism and and. Mm-hmm. That is something that is not in the mainstream. And no. I hope you're enjoying today's episode with Dr. Gutierrez. Quick little reminder, his information is gonna be linked down in the show notes for you guys if you know someone who wants to work with him or you wanna work with him. And a quick little note, I just came out with a brand new course called Circadian Health for the Busy Person. Because a lot of people are gonna to listen to this episode and say, oh my gosh, I really wanna take control of my circadian health, but I work in an office. I have to be at work before the sun comes up. I have to be at work after the sun goes down. I have a small child that wakes up all night, or I am a shift worker, or I live in a northern latitude. I even have people that live in Iceland and these different places. So I've created this brand new course just for those people, it's called Circadian Health for the Busy Person that's going to help you mitigate those different environments so that you can still have that amazing circadian health that Dr. Gutierrez and I talk about extensively in this episode. And if you're watching this before September the 12th, you can use my code subscriber20 to save 20% off of this brand new course. Again, that's only through September the 12th. So if you're missing that, then make sure you're signed up for my newsletter so you can get the discount the next time it comes around. But this is an excellent course, again, because so much of our health does depend on our nutritional balance, but also on those circadian rhythms. And it can be very, very challenging when you have a job or children or live in a climate that makes circadian health very uninhabitable. So that's why I've created this course to help you. Make sure to check that out linked down in the show notes. And if you are enjoying this episode, please give it a like leave me a comment down below to let me know that you're enjoying it and you want more content like this. And let's go ahead and jump right back into the episode with Dr. Gutierrez. Thank you again so much for watching and being a subscriber. I listen to a lot of podcasts to a lot of famous people like Peter Atia and, 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 other, and others, and they all have a lot of experts uh, about how like vitamin D works or how like uh, AMPK or the other mm-hmm. guy, uh, how it's uh, NM, um, and they and man, yeah. And, yeah. So guess what? All of that that, they, that they're talking about, everything is influenced by the clock mechanism. And the clock mechanism is influenced by light. <laughs> so exactly. they're, they're talking about the levers. Yep. You, may, we, you and I talk about who's pulling the levers. See, that's, yep. that's, that's the difference. And once you learn to control what, what pulls what levers, and I mean, I agree. I agree that we have to understand the lever. So, we, but we we can't lose sight of what exactly is pushing the buttons, so to speak. And that's that's kind of the perspective, and um, that that I bring. And, and you know, I get it, I I talk to different kind different kinds of patients with different educational background. You know, ones that are more educated, want to know more. I get a little bit more into the weeds, like we're getting with you here. Um, others, I just say, look, you know, did you have to ask your your great grandfather or grandmother what to eat or or how to behave? No, I mean, they, all these things that we're teaching, they were like it was just innate. Uh, in, right. <laughs> when we were when we didn't have all this environment. You know right. What I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, these incidences of disease. I think there's a lot of reasons behind them. You know, obviously, we've had more kind of chemicals in our food, people are drinking and eating out of plastic. Like there's a lot of endocrine disruption happening, but people never talk about the endocrine disrupting factors of, of just light, you know, and, and how much that has changed. There's no infrared in our bulbs Our the glass in our homes blocks out all infrared because, you know, if it didn't, then the air conditioning bills would be higher. You know, yeah, exactly. unfortunately, my air conditioning bills are high because I always have a window cracked or a door yeah, open. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> drives my husband completely insane. But, you know, once I explain these mechanisms to him, 
he gets it and, and seeing my health transform and change, he gets it now. Um, but it can be a tough sell to people, but that's, you know, that's one of the things I think most people are spending only 11% of their time under infrared light outside, Mm -hmm. you know, exposing their bodies to that light. And on a whole, we're becoming more metabolically unhealthy. And so, you know, when you, when you look at a patient, you mentioned you do the, the body scan, you also take blood markers, I guess, A1C, uh, mm-hmm. fasting insulin, those types of things. What portion of patients that, that come to see you, would you say are metabolically unhealthy? Um, probably about 99.99%. Oh, that high. I thought you were going to say more in line with like the 88%, but that high. Yeah. Wow. Oh my yeah, gosh. Well, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, it, it depends on how you do it. So if you define it by somebody having a phenotype of the metabolic syndrome, which is the five, the five things. The five things, yeah. yeah. Um, then it's, it's less than that. But I define metabolic health to the nitty gritty of having high oh. insulin and, and high uric acid. And, you know, so everybody Let's has- talk, How do you do So I want to know about those. So high uric acid, high insulin, what, what other well, things do you test for it for metabolic so health? I, Right, so so I test for the conventional stuff right? like uh, sugar and A1C, but my mm-hmm. my cutoff for A1C is not six; it's five point five or below. So yeah, yeah. Um, I test for fasting insulin. Uh, some people say, "Why should I if everybody has fasting insulin?" Well, that's the whole point because that's probably true, but you have to show it to people so they so they 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 understand. I also test for your, your lipid panel, a conventional lipid panel, but I also test for the uh, the lipoprotein breakdown, apo A and apo B, because that's really is more important. I test for uric acid, which is more important as a signal was very important as a signaling molecule. I test for vitamin D, um, which is very important as a signaling mm-hmm. molecule. And what I yes. find, what I find is almost everybody has low vitamin D. O- almost everybody has high uric acid. Almost everybody has some sort of version of disrupted uh, lipoproteins, which are uh, put into context your risk of disease of your cholesterol. Um, not cholesterol. That's another conversation. Probably need another podcast to, to discuss. But, <laughs> um, and then I show them that's turning on the insulin. So, mm-hmm. uh, so that what what I try to convey to people is this this point. These are signals. What I'm showing you here are levers mm-hmm. that are signaling your biology to gain fat, even, even, even if you're not fat yet, and, and to put the fat in the wrong places, like in Dangerous. the Dangerous, yeah, visceral because, fat. Because what, in essence, what is happening is by living this indoor lifestyle, your biology is, not, is meant to be outside. It's not meant to, I, mm-hmm. I am not God. I didn't design this. This is the way it is. So, right. so um, now you're sending a signal that there is a lack of electrons, lack of energy. You're sending a signal with low vitamin D. There's lack of sunlight, so the mitochondria has no choice but to turn on the defense mechanism, gain fat. And but the problem is that we keep perpetuating the. I mean, if if that were true, if that were, if you were going to go in and start for six months like a bear, that that would be what the purpose of the program. Right. But we don't. We keep we keep uh, adding fuel to the fire by not modifying our behavior, and that's eventually what results in disease. And because then it becomes an inflammatory condition. And then it becomes now the hypertension ruins your kidney or ruins your eyesight. And then you have a whole bunch of other things. So then what we say, but the solution is simple. We, we know where this is coming from. Let's try to fix it at the root. And then just get engaged with me. I, sometimes even at the, with the people that are, are, are the most reluctant, some people say, no, you're crazy. I'm fine. Okay, fine. Okay, goodbye. I'll see you, I'll see you next time. But uh, most people say, okay, so engage with us at least for three months so we can, we can at least do something. Because I, I, can't, I can't fix what I see it's wrong mm-hmm. in this visit. I can't, there is, no, there is no way, like I used to, the, the medical system wanted me to do, to give you a pill or you know, send you to a surgeon or, or give you an injection. Can't fix it this way. I, I, it, this has to be a change of behaviors in a gui- in a, in, with guidance. And mm-hmm. to your point, it is true. It's very simple. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not complicated what we have to do. You know, I understand. I myself have to live an indoor lifestyle because I'm in the office here trying to help people. But I mitigate it by later in the day, I'm going to wear my blue blockers. 
I have a screen filter here in the computer, uh, Iris. Mm -hmm. uh, I take sun breaks every every time that I that I that I can, every moment that I can. I sleep in darkness at nighttime. I wear my my nighttime blue blockers. In the morning, I wake up near the sunrise, and I I, I look like a lunatic because I I, I get out. Uh, we live uh, across the street from a park, so around sunrise, I get out barefoot. Uh, with my shorts on and a tank top and I do my grounding and I do my stuff uh, in the morning 10-15 minutes and then yeah 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 I think that's the thing that holds people back is they think it has to be like oh you have to be outside all the time you know and I, I'm trying to work on a course right now called circadian health for the busy person because mm -hmm. everyone is so so busy you know and and there are ways around things even if you work in an office even if you have to take your kids to school or you have to drive to the office before the sun comes up there's so many different things that you can do and i think that just the education piece on understanding like you said the main controller of the mitochondria is that signal through the eye is the light that signals through the eye and once you understand that concept, you can start changing your lifestyle around that. And these, you know, it's called quantum. A little small change is going to yield a that's large right. result. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the, the same words that I say to my patients. This is all quantum. So that means because people can't believe it. You know, I, I, like yeah. I have, you know, like this kid, he couldn't believe it. But I, I haven't exercised. I mean, he, it's not that he hasn't exercised. He, he's, he's, he's active. Out, he's, has a, he works outside. But, but the point is, you don't have to go to the gym necessarily. Right. You have different goals, but to be healthy, all you have to do is apply these concepts in their quantum. A little stimulus creates a big result, like the atomic bomb. A little yep. thing releases so much energy. So that, yep. that's what we're talking about here. And that's what you and I understand. It's, it's our duty to, to uh, get this out. So people, people start to, to, to understand this. Because, you know, we're not... We're, we, you know, people like to say you're not going to out outrun, meaning I would exercise a bad diet. Mm -mm. You're not going to out eat a bad light environment. <laughs> I found that out the hard way, you know, yeah. of just eating a perfect diet down to the T, no cheating, perfectly sourced. And then still my health wasn't where I wanted it to be. And I think that that and, and I was also experiencing that myself, but then having people as someone who was in the position that I was with the following that I had in the droves, emailing me, messaging me, I'm doing this diet just the way you say, or the way this doctor says, and I, it's, I, I'm stuck. I'm still 40 pounds overweight. I'm still dealing with autoimmune. I still have this. And so when I discovered this information, saw my health turn around, I almost feel like it's a duty now to continue to educate people on this because I, I, and, and now I see people, you know, I've had so many women in my private group that um, it's hard once you get into perimenopause and menopause to lose mm -hmm. the weight sure. um, because mitochondrial health is declining. Once we turn 25, our mitochondrial health begins to decline, but I have women that have been stuck at a certain weight, women in their seventies and sixties and fifties. And now they're like, oh, I just dropped 12 pounds, you know, because I did your, your leptin reset program, which is essentially understanding light magnetism and water and implementing that into your life. Very, very simple. Right. Um, and, and so when you see this type of thing actually working, it's like, how can you not, <laughs> how can you not just want to shout it from the rooftops of how helpful it can be, you know? Absolutely. No. Yeah. I've had, you know, with my own self, you know, I, I'm very healthy and 56 years old and I'm very healthy. I just got done doing a stage of the Tour de France. I'm a big cyclist. Wow. And, but not only with me too. I mean, I, I, I can show people that I can, I have, I don't know how many, how many patients I have. Well, I have about 200 members of the practice, but, um, and everybody has some sort of results, some dramatic results. I, you know, I have, I have a, a woman who started early on, who's 74, she hadn't seen a doctor in, <laughs> in 30 years. And she came here, her blood pressure was like 200 over 120. You know, oh. like another doctor would have sent her to the emergency room. Uh, and, you know, of course I, I prescribed her blood pressure medicine, but she engaged with us. So she lost, overall, she's lost like uh, 30 pounds and, and 20 pounds of those are fat. Uh, and, mm. and, you know, she doesn't take blood pressure medicines anymore. She's very healthy. We compare the blood tests where, she was at the beginning and we just recently did her 
uh, physical uh, year out. Uh, we track her progress every month. And she was eating well, and she was exercising, but she was never outside. Mm. So all, you know, the first month when she lost like 11 pounds, the first month, all she always said to her, look, you're doing things right. Yeah, we're going to tweak a, a few things in your diet, but go outside and yes. do something three times a week on the beach. They live, they live near a, a beach um, barefoot, 20 to 30 minutes with your husband. Do that three times a week. Boom, 11 pounds off. You know, whatever. Wow. So in one month. Yep. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Everyone's like, what did you do? What's your fertility prep to get pregnant? And I'm, you know, I have things I did, red light therapy, cold therapy, sunrise. But one of the biggest things I did that I think is completely underrated was just going off the grid and hiking, you know, wearing my grounding shoes, my Harmony 783s, and just being in the woods with no iPod, no music, listening to nature sounds and just walking and connecting with the earth as often as I possibly could. And I think that that made such a huge difference in my health that, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's just too simple. It's too simple, you know? <laughs> That's what but, we're designed to do. I mean, you yeah. Know. Yeah. And it changes everything. So, you know, you know, talk about fertility. We, we, uh, We've had, you know, I don't, you know, I, that's not my specialty, but um, I, you know, I'm a primary care doc, so uh, I, I have patients who've gotten pregnant along the way and they've miscarried. Um, mm, yep. Yeah. And, yeah. And when they look at the analysis, the genetic analysis, there's something, you know, genetic abnormal, abnormal mm -hmm. with, with the uh, the embryo, with the embryo, well, with the egg at the beginning, yep. from, yep. the, from the mother's side. And so I did a lot, I did some research and went to PubMed and, and you know, there are plenty of studies that, that have looked at animal, like in, in vitro, meaning cell cultures, mm -hmm. animal models and humans that have clearly documented that non-native EMF, particularly blue light, ruins the, uh, causes mutations in the, in, the, in the genetic information of the, of the egg. That's why there's some, so much infertility and, and not only the egg, the sperm too. But yep. now, if you look at the, the statistics about infertility rates in the last 50 years, they've skyrocketed. It's or, astounding. And, it's yeah. absolutely astounding. Yeah, I was so, listening to Shauna Swan, who I think gets a lot of it right, where she talks about our environment and all the different pl plastics and chemicals, but she doesn't talk about the light story. Because for me, I couldn't get pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy until I mitigated my non-native EMF and got my light environment correct. And then it was like, once I did that, there we go. And that was the last thing I was so stubborn. I'm like, oh, that can't, can't play a part. But the, the densest area of mitochondria, you know, is the oocyte. And then we have the brain and the heart. But for a woman who's looking to get pregnant, you got to understand you have to improve your mitochondrial function. You can take all the supplements in the world but if you don't get your light magnetism and water down, it's going to be a lot harder. You know, it really is and heartbreaking. Absolutely. So that you bring, a, bring up a very good point. So like uh, people like to take supplements and antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a, a, against antioxidants and supplements in the right context. But then people won't do earthing or grounding. Okay, so what, what, what are antioxidants? Antioxidants are basically substances that quench radical oxygen species. Mm -hmm. And what are radical oxygen species? Are, are, um, are, uh, are oxygen species that have a, a very unstable electron. So all antioxidants do is they lend an electron to these unstable uh, electrons in, in the radical oxygen species to, to stabilize. Okay, so one pill of a vitamin C is gonna give you one electron. So guess what? You get an infinite amount of electrons from the earth just by yes. wearing your feet on the earth. You yes. get all the antioxidants you, you need just by doing that, you know, five to 10 minutes a day, you know, right. at different times of the day. So these exactly. are, yeah, I mean, these are things that they can teach me in medical school, but no. there's plenty of research out there that, that if- That if shows. You, if you're curious, you can just go and, and read. And these are peer reviewed studies. It's not like some, some person wrote a book somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, so, and uh, you know, Martin Paul is the researcher at Washington State University that really talks about, and I know you're very familiar with this, that non-native EMF causes excess calcium in the cell, which gives it a, a positive charge, which creates more ROS, which again, you know, take all the antioxidants in the world, but if you're flooding your cells with calcium because you're surrounded by non-native EMF, you're fighting an uphill battle and people are like, oh, I would need to see the research on that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> go look up Martin Paul, two L's on the end, Washington State University. The yeah. research is out there, but there's so much money in technology that I don't think that this information has been made readily available to anyone who doesn't go and seek it out. We don't, we're so conditioned to think it's safe, it's fine. The research is out there, right? So yeah, I, it, you know, it, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's it's uh, it's the same thing with my profession in the medical system. You know, the, the medical system is a uh, you know it's a three four trillion dollar business. Yeah. You know, yeah. When, you, when you count the medical uh, industrial medical industrial complex with big pharma and the insurance companies, and if if you add the food industry and technology, it's probably I don't know mm. a four trillion dollar business. So of course it's in their best interest not not to let the mainstream uh, understand that there's a lot of research out there, which there is. I mean, the people pu publish books like, you know, like uh, uh, Andrew Marina, uh, Becker, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and there's a lot more research for even from those books that has, has been published. One of the things in my profession that people ask me, well, show me the, the <laughs> I, I love this, show me the, uh, the, the placebo controlled uh, <laughs> peer reviewed <laughs> placebo control randomized trial that shows this, you know, because that's, <laughs> that's the gold standard in my profession, medicine. Right. So, you know, I, and I'm not against, I'm not against studying, studying, you, we have to have an organization in science. What I'm against is that if you don't have a placebo control randomized study that what, what all the other research is not true. And that's basically some people say, some people actually say that. So my counterpoint to that is, okay, so you're telling me that you're randomizing. So what you randomize is you're randomizing two homogeneous populations. And you're trying to say this amount of women equals to this other amount of women, this amount of men, et cetera, and, uh, whether, whatever. And then you, you, you actually um, study whatever your, the intervention that you're trying to study. But, if you don't take into account two things, one is your mitochondria haplotype. Yes. It's because Dr. Dr. Uh, Wallace has shown that one single mutation in the mitochondrial DNA makes somebody very healthy in the Tibet and the same mutation makes somebody diabetic and sick at sea level. One single mutation. If you, if you don't take that into account and if you don't take into account the circadian rhythm, i.e. the light environment, because how that person is going to respond to whatever intervention is very much influenced by the circadian clock machinery that is in, in, involved and influenced by light that we're talking about, then you're not randomizing it. You, it's not really a randomized study. You know, right. so even right. those, those two things, even a randomized study is really not a randomized study. So yeah, I, and these I, studies I, are done under blue light in the laboratory. Both, it's like, right. <laughs> what's that going to tell you you know not much yeah you know i want to make it clear. i'm not against it i'm just saying yeah. i'm just saying it's not the truth it, it, right. it's a it's a uh, it's a good way to try to get to the truth but right let, let's not market it as that's the only truth out there right i always ask people do you really need a randomized control study or peer-reviewed study to see how we evolved for you know thousands and thousands of years do you really need to see a study on that that we were living outdoors underneath the sun that's how we got to this modern day and age eating a local seasonal diet connected to the earth do you need a trial to show i mean the fact that we're here you know and that as we've implemented technology and all these other things we've gotten sicker you know people want to say, oh, well, we died so much younger, you know, a couple hundred years ago. We actually didn't. Once we got out of, you know, infant stage, because infant mortality was high, uh, once we got past that, people lived about the same amount of time that they live now. And that was without, you know, all these interventions that we have and medications and therapies. And, you know, so are we really <laughs> healthier now with all of these things that we're bringing in? 
We, we are not. No, no. We're sicker. Yeah. We're, we're sicker. And, and, and to your point, you're absolutely right. That's the, the best experiment that is out there is the fact that we're here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the best experiment. And we, exactly. we didn't get here because we had blue light and indoor right. light. And because we were eating potato chips. That's not the reason why we're here. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Well, I had one more question for you. Uh, we have a mutual friend and she was the one who said, oh, you need to reach out to him, interview him. And I'm so glad I did. She said you have been using a little bit of photobiomodulation with your patients. Is that, is that correct? I'd love to hear about that if that is something yes, that you're doing no, that, now. No, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I've also, I'm very interested in also helping. So I'm not a biohacker per se. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a person to, uh, you know, that foments nature like you. But um, there is a lot of research that we could actually use some of these electromagnetic waves from the sun and harness them and utilize them for the benefit of health. And one such uh, technology is red and infrared light. And there's plenty of studies out there published peer-reviewed and published in, in very prestigious clinical institutions that have shown clearly that infrared at, uh, at um, a different wavelength. So the, the panels that I have, have uh, are, are, they have infrared and red. The, infra, the red is at 630 and 660 nanometer wavelength and the infrared is at 630 and 650 nanometer wavelength. And they do different things um, for your body. The, the, the red actually foments Fibroblasts, so it'll actually help you grow hair if you're if you're thinning out your, your hair. Actually, helps the skin, the health of the skin, and that's been that's been shown. That's that's been shown in clinical studies, peer reviewed, placebo controlled, if you will. And then the infrared actually uh, penetrates deeply, and it actually is able to make energy, uh, make help the mitochondria make chemical energy without having to use electrons. That's one thing, and the other thing, it it's actually uh, sends a signal for uh, anti-inflammation and health. So I, I've been using them mostly for people that have pain. Like uh, I, I don't, I'm not a pain doctor, so I don't see people with chronic pain. But everybody has aches and pains here and there. So uh, what we what we do is we we give them uh, red light therapy, and I, I, you know I kid you not, I have I have patients that even after just one. Uh, light therapy, 10 minutes with the panels that I have, have said that they've felt like 100% better. And, and, you know, of course, you know, um, one single session is not really enough, but for some people, maybe. And, you know, and, and right now I've, uh, so I, I've been kind of uh, just experimenting on how I want to really incorporate it. But it, so anybody that's a member of the practice and wants to use it, they can for now. And it's a, it's, it's actually, I've had, I, I use it myself. I use it. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have a panel that I bought for the office, but I actually have it in my, in my, in my bathroom. Uh, and then my wife and I use it and it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it, it, it's a feeling of well-being. It's, it's modulating the mitochondria basically. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a hack that we use um, not as a supplement for, for sunlight and the things that we've, that we've uh, been discussing here but as an, an addition in-, in Yes, in adjunct therapy. therapy. Yep. I agree. Yeah, we. I mean, we all love it here. I was the I was the first one to get it, obviously, for fertility health and mitochondrial health. And then, then my husband started using it on his head because he was worried about thinning hair and poof, he's got hair, you know, more hair than he had. So he's addicted to it. And now my daughter with autism just loves it. You know, when she comes home from school, she wants to do red light therapy because she it kind of helps settle her. And so, it, it, I mean, I think it's amazing. And I wish more doctors, again, could use it kind of as an adjunct therapy because it is wonderful for pain relief, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. so many wonder, I had Dr. Uh, Belkowski on the show not too long ago, and he's put all the studies and everything together into a kind of a manual. So I think that if people are skeptical on that one, that's check out that manual. There's plenty and plenty of studies on it. 
No, no, I, there's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, a lot of studies, but it has to be the correct wavelength. So that's, yes, a, that's, a, that's the key. You don't want to just buy any panel. And we talked about that, Ian, you don't want that one that's got the non-native EMF and the flicker and all those. I mean, there's, you gotta, you can't just go on Amazon and buy a red light panel. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Have you been working with uh, with Chris at EMR Tech or have you got some other panels? No, no. I, I, whatever Kelly is. is, uh, is... Oh, yeah. Kelly's the EMR Tech person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, haven't, I haven't really delved into, into that. I, it's, you know, Kelly is local. So uh, oh, know, OK, that's OK. That's right. So, so she came. She recommended me uh, recommended me to some patients. Um, the other the one patient that she recommended uh, when one was a kid that I told you about, but the other one mm -hmm. was another woman who went to her doctor. She's hypertensive, and she uh, she was diagnosed with diabetes, and and she really wanted to take charge of her health. And she asked the doctor, "Well, what can I do to help my diabetes?" And the doctor said, "Nothing. Take your pill. Take your pill." And what, mm -hmm. what about that story was that her doctor uh, comes. It's Indian in ethnicity from, from from India, which you would assume. I mean, I'm, I don't know anything about her, but uh, I, you know, it struck me because you would assume that in that culture you would have rooted a lot of these other concepts. So, um, but nonetheless, so so she said goodbye. I'm not going to do that. I, I want to do. Uh, <laughs> I want to really take a hold of myself. So she came here, and then Harry went to see his six or something. You know, mm. it, it's no medicine. She takes no no medicine for that because we just. She engaged in the program. She loves it, and and then right now the, the next step is to see if we can take. I mean, eventually she will be able to come off the blood pressure medication. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a start, and and I I think some people do need that support and guidance from a doctor. There's a lot of people that just want to kind of DIY everything, and you know, let me just do it, and then they end up. <laughs> needing a lot more support and help. So obviously the podcast is not medical advice, but, you know, I do think that there is a place for guidance from a physician that understands the things that you do. And that's why I just, I wanted to bring you on because I just respect so much what you're doing. And I, I want to get more doctors thinking like you, because like you and I both agree we need more people thinking this way because we we have a big crisis on our hands right now. Yes, yes. the 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 challenge to bring on doctors is it's uh, it's the money. Comes, it's money. It it really boils yeah. down. To that. It, it 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 comes to it right now, and I think Dr. Cruz mentions this also. You know, mm -hmm. back when he started and I started, I started around the same time he started. Uh, nobody was employed. By I mean, I started right. actually as a as a solo practitioner. You know, within the insurance industry, because that's what. Uh, but I was I had my own. It was my own business. It was just you know within the system. But now everybody is employed, and and, mm -hmm. and so that means that the doctors are beholden by the paycheck that is beholden mm -hmm. by what the system tells them to do. Yeah. Even even me now, I have I have patients here that are members of our because I, I have a it's a medical practice. I, I just mm -hmm. have this perspective. But you know, I'm licensed to practice medicine, and uh, so I. Some people that come here have insurance. Most have insurance. I just don't charge the insurance, but they use the insurance for other reasons. But then, you know, they I get letters from their insurance company saying, "Well, Dr. Gutierrez, this such and such person is not on a statin." So uh, the stu studies have shown that you, this person should be on a statin, and I just laugh. I throw it away. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Because I'm not beholden to that. I'm I'm right. beholden to the patient. Exactly. That's you know, and people are always like, "Well, should I get what labs should I get?" I'm like, "Well, you probably should get your leptin checked, get this check, get that checked." And they're like, "Well, my doctor won't check my leptin," and I said, "Because there's no drug that you can take for your leptin, right. <laughs> but right. it's a signaling hormone, and it's extremely important in your right. metabolic health." Well, most doctors don't know what leptin is. Exactly. Which is astounding to me, you know, where Carrie and I are doing a fertility course together right now. And that's one of the things that we told the ladies before we even started the course, you need to go get a fasting leptin checked. We need to know what that is going into the six weeks that we have together. It's very, very important that you have this information because it is probably affecting your fertility. And I haven't had one person in our course that's come back to me with a normal 
leptin level, sure. like none of them, you know, and they're all struggling with fertility, but you go to it. I, you know, I went through it. I myself went to an endocrine, a reproductive endocrinologist, fertility doctor asked for leptin and they kind of look at you like, well, why, why would you need that? <laughs> but sure. when yeah. you're, when you're tied to and married to the insurance company, the money, all of those things, then you're just going to say, no, we don't need to do that. There's no treatment course for it. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it's, it's a lot easier. It's human nature. And, you know, it's, it's yeah. a lot easier, a lot easier to, you know, collect your paycheck and be oblivious to all these, all these things. Um, Cause it's a pretty paycheck. I mean, I'm not going to yeah. lie. I oh yeah. Away from a pretty paycheck. But yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, we, we're, we only got one life to live. You right know, and, exactly and we better make the most the most of our of the lives that we live and am i gonna is my legacy gonna be the you know i had 10 boats 10 yachts or or 10, 10 mansions or is my legacy gonna be that i was able to help one human reverse right, the disease? right. and like, I, I mean i like to think that a lot of people like yourself got into the medical profession out of a desire to help, out of a desire to make a difference. And that what ends up happening is that you get uh, jaded over time and you get kind of beat down over time because right. of the money and the insurance and all these, the red tape that you have to go through. So I, I really do respect what you're doing and, and how you're helping people. Well, and I do respect you too. I mean, I'm oh, a big fan of, fan of yours Aww. and I love your podcast and I love the, the guests you get on your show. Well, it's been awesome to have you here as a guest. And um, I, I just, I appreciate everything you have to say. And I know people are going to be asking, you know, how they can find you. You know, do you see, do you do any telehealth? Is it all in person? Um, no, 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 it's not all in person. So I, uh, we, I, we do telehealth. So we, we awesome. actually have, we have people from, uh, that live in Italy. We just have oh, wow. a, a person that lives in Japan. Um, so I, so the wellness part, I can do it pretty much anywhere in the world. The doctor part, I can only do in, in Massachusetts and Rhode Island because of the license. Prescribing. So, yeah, if I, but that's all it allows me to do is, it allows me to call myself a doctor, which is BS. I mean, <laughs> I'm a doctor. I mean, a, a medical doctor. Right. And it allows me to prescribe medications. Right. Um, and that I, I can only do in, 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 in Massachusetts in, or in Rhode Island or if I see a person once a year, which I have a few, few of these people that I can live in Florida or in other places, uh, if I can see them in person once a year, then I can, I'm allowed to prescribe um, it wherever they're living within the United States. So that's it. But I know I, I can, I, if somebody is interested in uh, learn more about what we do, they can certainly contact us, you know, our, our website. So I'm, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, um, and it's totally more direct health. But you were we're friends, so they they can reach me through you. Like I don't know how that yeah. works. But I'm yeah. gonna put all of your links and website and just ways to get in touch with you and your practice in the show notes. Yeah. So anybody listening can can find you and work with you. And um, I just I love it. it's a great resource because I get asked all the time. I need a doctor to help me, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. no, no. they're few and far between. So yeah, I'm definitely going to resource that underneath the show notes so people can find you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. I'm happy to, to to help people that reach out to you um, because yeah, I do I do bring that extra layer. You know, and that's uh, yeah. uh, I, I think that's I mean. From a, a lot of different different reasons, that's a that's a good thing to have. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today. This has been a really wonderful conversation. I think people are going to find a lot of nuggets to take away from it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, and, and I loved talking to you.